All right, so with a lot of hype being around Feishao, who's going to be a part of 2.5 and is a Wind Hunt character, there's been a lot of things circulating if she's going to be sort of on the tier of Akron or Firefly. And so today I wanted to kind of be talking about that, sort of going over Akron, Firefly, why they're really good, talking about Feishao, what we might know, and sort of see if she might be actually hitting that tier. Because as we do know, DPS-wise, we do have really good DPSs in the game. We have Don Heng, we have Jing Lu, we have them in their own tier. But at the very top of DPSs, we do have Akron and Firefly, who are undisputed of the best DPSs in the game. And the gap between them and the tier below that is pretty big, which is demonstrated from the sheer output that both of them can get as opposed to the other characters. So I wanted to kind of be talking about, will Feisha be hitting that kind of tier? First and foremost, a quick disclaimer. This video is obviously not going to be belittling Akron or Firefly at all, which it kind of can't because the beginning of the video is literally me talking about how good they are. So I just want to have that as a disclaimer. Just note, very important. And yeah, that's all I got to say before I get to the video. Drop a like, drop a sub, hit the bell icon for more videos like this and let's get straight into it. So first, we mainly should start talking about what makes Firefly, what makes Akron just this kind of thing where they're like running the game they are the, in their own tier since we do know akron she is this debuff based dps you do debuffs in order to give her stacks for her ultimate once you get nine stacks you're able to unleash the ultimate dealing this insanely powerful sequence of an ultimate which for the most part does single targets levels of damage as an aoe there are multiple ways to stack her up now there's stuff like the universal market trend strat running two debuffers just being able to get her stacks as quickly as possible and even outside of her all her actual skill being able to do good damage and then you combine it with what debuffers we do have in the game we have characters that can lower defense make them take increased alt damage just any sort of debuffs working to increase her damage and then the sheer number she actually gets out is what puts her on the very top so it is no question that Akron is practically the best DPS in the game, or at least tied with, again, Firefly. Even with some restrictions that she has, as you want to have one or two Nihility characters, depending if you have Iza or E2. Even with those kind of restrictions, it has proven that she doesn't really get held back by them that much. And even with them, she's at the very top because of how much her damage is. Everything she's providing, everything she can do, just providing an insane amount of damage. And now, if we look at someone like Firefly... With the new break meta that has recently come upon us, Firefly is the character that kind of skyrocketed that whole playstyle because of the sheer output she can get throughout the break playstyle. Running her with characters like Harmony Trailblazer to absolutely skyrocket her damage, Ruan Mei who benefits her entirely as well. The whole playstyle being around breaking the enemy and once you do break them, you're able to do stuff like super break, doing break damage towards them, everything you do to jump that damage from little bit when you wouldn't really be doing much because they obviously aren't broken yet but then you break them and that damage goes up from like 5k to like 350 400 500k and not only that breaking the enemies means they can't actually attack you and because they can't attack you that means you don't have to worry about dying so you're able to dish out a bunch of damage while also being pretty safe from enemy attacks so you're not being worried about getting cc'd you're not worried about taking too much damage and then as a byproduct of that you're not really worried about dying so you don't really have to worry about dying while dishing out all this damage. And then you're getting the sheer output from Firefly, who is also very easy to use. It's not like you did anything specific. You just have the setups with Ruan Mei. Just have the skill active and then boom, you just kind of go crazy. Break the enemy. They can't attack you. And suddenly now you're dealing 400, 500k per skill with Firefly. So the break style plus the damage, or you look at Akron with her debuff style, plus her also just sheer damage. It's very clear why these two characters get put up at the very top. Just because their damage output, once again, is just unmatched. Their damage is insanely high. And so, then begs the question, will someone like Feishao finally be the other character that's going to be hitting that tier? So there are rumors and such that Feishao is going to be around their level. There's rumors about what she's going to be doing. To address a few, there's stuff talking about that she's going to be doing literally everything that we have. So, doing crit damage, doing break damage, doing dot, doing follow-up damage. That has been the rumors going around that she is going to just be doing all that, which obviously if she's able to do all that, that makes her this pretty flexible unit. And obviously having a flexible unit makes them easier to build and giving them more team options, which alone can put a unit at a very high standpoint. And now even if she doesn't do that, or she might have one or two, like she might just be a crit and a break DPS, that would also still be broken. And then you can also throw on maybe a fall up attack. Like maybe she's a crit DPS that does fall up attacks. That also does break. If you look at the characters we do have in the game that can support that and the teams that we already have that exist around that, you can mix and match a bunch of teams. You're going to have a bunch of units that are going to be really flexible. 
such as on the follow-up team, we already have premium follow-up teams having someone like Ratio, Topaz, Aventurian, and Robin. If she is a follow-up character, you'd be able to easily just sub out someone like Ratio, and boom, you just have this premium team with Nao Fishout, who is going to be dishing out all this damage as well. So she'd be another really broken character you can use there. Or if she's on the break side, you would just have a break team, but instead of the break DPS, so instead of someone like Firefly or Boot Hill, you would have Fishout. So you'd be running Fishout with Ruan Mei, and then you have a sustain, and then the last slot would mainly be up to you. Or you could also even do it as a hybrid. If she does both break and she does both crits, you could do something like having her with Ruan Mei as the break support, and then you could also pair someone like Sparkle to buff the hell out of her crit damage, and then the last slot being a sustain. So now you have this hybrid team where you have Ron May buffing all types of damage plus break and all that kind of stuff and then you also have Sparkle giving more turns on top of that giving a bunch of crit damage giving some attack percent giving some damage so the output and the sheer numbers you can get throughout phase shot if she's able to do that would be insanely good the only problem with that is if one starts to lean more on the other by that I mean if one side might have more benefits such as break having more benefits if you guys do remember the whole thing about firefly before all the nerfs and such there was a whole thing about having crit fly, which wasn't really that worth, it was always just better to do break anyways. And that sort of might have this discrepancy of what people might think. And having the split stats is not only very difficult to build, but also just not that great. It's a different story where you mainly will focus on one and just getting some of the other is fine. That's like completely normal. But if it's more optimal to focus on both crit and break and having it balanced, then it becomes really hard to manage, especially with the scalings being weird. That is the only time this might become a little bit of an issue. But if they definitely do a thing where she might have both sides on the kit. So if she does have break and crit, but one might be better than the other. So say she has some break, which might amplify her damage. But then she mainly does damage based off her crit and just giving her turns via a sparkle would be the better play. But then when you do trigger the break, that's when damage goes even higher by a good amount. But it's not something you really have to focus on. It doesn't really make it to where she needs it in order to function. Then it's completely fine. And then if you account for the fact that she could have follow-up attacks, the sheer damage she can get based by just critting, along with the buffs she can get via a team options, and then also being able to amplify damage throughout doing break, all of that plays really well together if done correctly. The crit itself doing the main damage, so no matter if you're breaking or not, or just whatever is hitting is going to do damage. The follow-up attack dealing even more damage, and then also helping with more break, and then when you do end up breaking, amplifying that damage to do even more. And combining all that together, if done properly, can easily give her the damage output as someone like Firefly or Akron, or could even put her above them. Because now you have this character that's very versatile on teams that can use the best supports in the game easily, can use both Ruan Mei and Sparkle on a team, which is going to be really good. Imagine having a DPS that can make the best use of both very easily. And then even if you don't have them, something else, someone like Sparkle for Bronia or Ruan Mei for Harmony Trailblazer. Having someone like that is extremely powerful, and that, if done correctly, can easily put her above characters like Akron and Firefly, practically putting her in her own tier alone. And this is also not including if her kit might also have stuff like ignore defense, because we know how broken, no matter what you're doing, ignoring defense is insanely broken. So that might be another broken thing to consider for. Even if she does have some gimmick where, like Akron, she needs debuffs applied to the enemies in order to gain stacks to all. As we've seen with Akron, we did think that was going to be a bit bad, but it ended up not being an issue at all, and she's still just her own tier of DPS. Even if Aisha has something like that, where she might need debuffs, or it could be something like where someone needs fall attacks, or other allies have to attack. With that, if she is doing the things properly, and she has this break where it can amplify damage, her main damage coming from crit, her also having a fall attack, adding all that together wouldn't really make that much of an issue. Especially, which we obviously don't know, if her multipliers are really high, because multipliers are obviously going to be really important. If she has a lot of high multipliers, or if she has bonus stuff like when doing break, you multiply damage by this multiplier. Or if she has traces where it's like follow up damage to increase damage, this might be boosted by this and it might be considered ultimate damage or follow up damage. A lot of things like that can play together and that can easily put her on the tier of Firefly and Akron or even above. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. That's sort of what I think about this, and that's kind of what I think will be for Feisha. Obviously not saying this is all what she's going to be doing. I'm going to say if she is sort of what we know about, that she might obviously be the top of the top DPSs. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think she's going to be doing. And yep, peace out.